so that you're not getting people aren't bombarded with one person trying to to, to have to, to have their position known, but everybody knows the facts, and then they can go to the workshops, they can go to the various coffee talks that are not in violation of the Sunshine Law and ask questions. And I think if we can improve our communication from the city to let everybody know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Christman, do you want me to repeat or? Okay. okay. Um, following law is crucial. And Florida sometimes in the public eye as a, na as a state for not following the law or having challenges with the law. I think the Sunshine Laws are tight and it makes it challenging when you're trying to communicate with constituents. So I think I understand where those, where the communication has come from, but it's vital that we follow the law. And I think that we would start with trusting the city manager, trusting the city manager's team. And the city manager system was created in the early 20th century to try to protect the administration, the money, the, the kind of the ultimate working out of the decisions from the politics from keeping it from some sort of a political game of trying to gain your own advocacy. Um, that's an important thing for us to be thinking about when we think about our governance. And we are choosing commissioners to be leaders, to deal with policy, to be thinking in terms of vision, and helping kind of direct the system, but not down into the weeds, taking the role away from the staff that are the experts that are hired for the purpose of protecting those decisions for the city, from political structure. So I would not want to, and my friends can tell you I love to write long emails, and would love to just be communicating all the time. So I think communication is vital, and I think it's, it's been challenging sitting on the Parks and Rec board, having to space the same sunshine laws. There's times when you want to just talk things out, and that's restricted, but that's the law, and we need to follow the law. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan, same question. You repeat the I question. was going to ask if you might want that. Uh, <clears throat> at least one sitting commissioner believes their personal, community-wide advocacy for or against a project prior to the commission review is okay. Others feel it is a violation of Florida ethics and sunshine laws. What do you believe is proper and right in this regard? I believe transparency from the city is needs to be improved and is a critical element to have informed citizens. Of course, these policies come forward from our elected leaders, so how can they put forward their ideas and still conform to the Sunshine Law, which in Florida is an incredibly powerful and effective uh, statute. So, I think we need more noticed meetings. For instance, Orange Avenue Overlay, when the commission was unable to reach a consensus on that, they noticed uh, multiple, how many, eight, twelve meetings for the commission to get together. So if a critical issue comes up, the communication can be taken care of by noticed meetings. Uh, other than that, should a commissioner be allowed to advocate on a, an issue to the general public? I believe that's the question. Uh, if the intent is to communicate with the other commissioners, yeah, that's a violation of sunlight, sunshine law. I'm not a lawyer, but I believe it would be, and there should be some kind of limits on that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weidenberg, Mr. your response. I can repeat the question. No, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, I think it's, uh, it is not appropriate for individual commissioners to be putting forward their personal opinions uh, and emails outside of the system. Uh, what I do feel is appropriate and what we all need work on is how we communicate with one another. Um, I think that we, as commissioners, we all need a lesson in collaboration and mediation, how to work together. Uh, in fact, I would hope that in the beginning of the, uh, beginning of our, when the commission starts with the, in, in March or April, that we should have a training session on how we all, all five of us come together whoever is finally elected, come together, and we are taking classes in, in mediation and collaboration. And 
that to me is a point because because how we how we communicate in the community is given by example and it starts at the decks it starts with the city commissioners if they're not behaving how can we expect our citizens to behave and i think there's been misbehavior just in terms of how we communicate with one another um, that said we need you know the the place where the the um, sunshine law does make it difficult because you make decisions by talking to one another so it, it is so having an opportunity in workshops and all those places for commissioners to go back and forth is great and we need to be able to do that in the public eye but doing it individually outside of the public eye is not appropriate thank you and mr bomber you will have uh the first opportunity for the next question this one is related to the winter park library and event center if elected Will you uphold the commission's vote to move forward with the library and events center? Yes. <laughs> more, more importantly, we have created, we have created, we have, while it's been painful getting there, we're gonna have a world-class library for a world-class community. We have world-class museums, we have world-class a world-class uh, college, we have world-class Bach choir. It's just an amazing, amazing community. And this library is going to be superb for our kids and for our grandkids. It's a long-term investment, and it's a great one. The Civic Center is going to be a, you know, a place where the community can meet. We've been missing that. We've been missing that. We need a room bigger than this so that we can have folks coming together, and we will have that. We will have a library that has all of the bells and whistles it needs to be a phenomenal, phenomenal place for maker spaces and all those kinds of things. Now, on the commission, we need to make sure it gets done on time. And on, you know, it's for, it's uh, forty-one point three million dollars. That's got to be the final price when we're all done. And as an architect, that's what I that's what I've done all my career is to make sure we bring a project in on time and on budget. And we have a budget. We have the money in place to do it. We need to finish it. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. The Library and Events Center was a contentious proposal. The contention is over. The City Commission voted to, that it go forward, and I believe now it's incumbent upon us to come together, put aside our differences, and make sure we have the best citizen, uh, library and event center that we as citizens can be properly served by it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Creasman, same question. Uh, yes, I will support it. I think it's a good decision. I, think it, I was supporting it from the beginning. Um, I think it's an example, again, of our democratic process. Um, when we make decisions as a collective, when we, we the people, decide something, um, votes are always very tight. Um, they're rarely, they're rarely about 55 percent on whatever level you look at. Um, and so, in that process, it becomes incumbent upon us to learn to lose gracefully and to learn to accept. And I certainly have been on the, I guess, the losing side of several decisions um, that are frustrating because I don't want to lose. I think my ideas are a good idea, um, but it didn't win the popular support of those who were making the decision. So I'm very happy with where we are. Um, I think it's going to be an award-winning, beautiful place. I look forward to the Civic Center coming back to life, being used for weddings and group meetings that are there. I'm eager to see that. Um, I'm not afraid of any of what could possibly come. I've heard some people talk about fear. FDR, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. We should not be afraid of the future. The future is coming. We can live through it. We can approach it well. And this is going to be an exciting moment for us as we continue to develop well in the city and continue to continue the dream that has been from the very beginning back again when the city was first founded. We're already a tourist destination of so many amazing, wonderful things, the Bach Festival Park, Morris Museum. This will be another place where people want to come to see our library and students on the west side, children across the city, but an investment in the west side of the city is an important investment. Thank you. That's time. Mr. Cicio, your response? Yes, I too will uphold the decision. The commission voted on it. If we were to back out now, we'd lose over $10 million that we could not recoup. So I want to see this be the best possible library and event center for the citizens of Winter Park. I'm excited about it. And I too, like Jeffrey, will work to make sure that it comes in on time and budget and we'll review it so that we do have the best possible library. Thank you. Thank you. And as our time is uh, growing short, uh, we're going to move to our closing 
uh, statements. Again, there are 60 seconds as opposed to 90. And we'll start um, with Mr. Sullivan and then Mr. Blydenberg's um, closing statement to follow. Thank you, David. This is a wonderful opportunity to put forward some of my views. Critical projects that need critical thinking and knowledgeable oversights are the Library and Event Center and the Orange Avenue Overland. We need leadership for someone with a strong engineering background. We need to oversee, oversee these two endeavors and the engineer Winpark needs is me. I'm looking to achieve a more citizen-focused government. I have 20 years experience working on water park boards, including the utility advisory board where I spearheaded buying the electric infrastructure 20 years ago. My objective is to keep this a premier urban village. I will work to preserve what's best in our community. Thank you, that's time. Mr. Blackenberg. Your closing statement. One of the things that I've learned uh, in the last couple of weeks with meet and greets and talking to you all is constantly reminding that I constantly reminded that as a commissioner I represent 29,000 constituents. Not 500 here and 1,000 there or two here. It's 29,000. Every one of you matters, as Carl has said. It's got the best campaign slogan. People matter. It's really true. You all matter. We had the great fortune in this community that Mr. Rogers came from here, and I have adopted him as part of my campaign. We all live, we live in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Winter Park is Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. We are all neighbors. We all work together. We live together. We, you know, and that's how we should behave together. We should, you know, obviously there are going to be times we don't agree, but there are going to be lots of times we agree. And I'd like us to get to the point where we really are on the win-win side of things and we find the right way to do things. That's how we're going to grow as a community. That's how we're going to grow. The, that's what I, when I talk about in my campaign, protecting Winter Park, that's what it's about. You, that's time. Uh, and now we'll go to Ms. DeCizio for her closing statement. Thank you all. I respectfully request that you vote for me for seat two, Winter Park City Commission. I have the most experience and I will have the time to devote full time to being your city commissioner. After practicing law for almost 40 years, I'm stepping back from the full time practice so I can devote myself. I believe we are the stewards for the next generation and it is our responsibility to leave this city better than we found it. Winter Park is a jewel, but there are many serious issues facing it and I want to work to make Winter Park the absolute best. I truly believe the best is yet to come. So please, everyone vote. The last day to vote is March 17th. Early voting starts March 2nd. It's a nonpartisan election, so everybody vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Creason, your closing statement. Thank you very much. Thanks for all of you being here. Thanks for watching on Facebook Live. Uh, when I decided to run for this, there was a really clear issue for me. Thinking back in 2017 and 2018 when I was considering it, was that was the tone. Um, I'm slightly concerned for our nation and our city as a part of the nation. And when I think about the tone that we've had with each other in general terms, it makes me nervous. As a historian, I know where that possibly can go. And I think what's important for us is to keep in mind and remember what should drive us is how much we care for each other. When I start my classes every semester, I remind my students, my underwriting philosophy is that every person matters, every person has value, every person's voice should be heard. And that's something I think we have lost in the city, and I think we need to get it back. Um, I had Mr. Rogers first, Jeffrey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that idea that we are a neighbor, we don't always agree with each other. We will not always agree with each other. But if we can put ourselves to the place of doing right towards one another, to loving justice, to pursue mercy, to walk humbly, when we do that with each other, we are at our best. We are our best together. And when we go forward together, that's the best way. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to all of the candidates. And everyone.